What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, I'll give you a second to subscribe. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I'm patient. Okay, that was more than enough time. As you guys can see in the title, I'm doing another story time. Y'all really be eating up my story times. Like the last one, y'all ate it up. No crumbs were left. So I'm going to have to give y'all another one, period. So I'm sure if you guys read the title, y'all are like, um, Chesso, what are you talking about? Y'all, I promise this is not clickbait. Like, if you know me in real life, you know this story or like... If you're close to me, you know this story. There is no part of me that is making this story up, y'all. Like, if I was gonna make up a story, this would not be the story that I make up, so. But, you know, time has passed, and I'm over the situation. It's really nothing to me now, so I can speak on it, because your girl has healed. Like, it doesn't matter. And I want to put out a disclaimer that I am not bashing anybody in any type of way. Even the boy that I'm going to be talking about, I am not bashing him. I actually contacted him and made sure he knew I was going to be doing this story time because I wanted to tell my truth and I just wanted to give y'all this story and I didn't want anybody to feel like I was coming for them, like I was being messy, bashing anybody. And I want to also say, ooh, my ring light is moving. I want to also say that I'm not going to be tolerating any homophobic comments in the comment section. So if you guys are preparing to make some nasty comments about homosexuality or any of that, hold it because I don't want it in my comment section. I will probably delete it and block you because that's not what we're doing here. As y'all should know, your girl is LGBTQ. B. Emphasis on the B. I just got to tell y'all this story because it's a crazy ass story and it's just like, it's like it doesn't happen to, you know, your normal day-to-day -day citizen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this story. I also have bullet points in my notes as I usually do so that I don't forget anything. It's currently, just so y'all know, it's 8.14 at night. Ooh, peep my nails, y'all. So cute, so cute. Give me y'all evil eye vibes. Oh, let me get a thumbnail first because I always forget to get a thumbnail. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, so this story dates back to 11th grade. Um, I met this boy when I was in 11th grade. And at the time, you guys, like I said in my previous story time, I was talking to a lot of boys that were just mm, trash. Basura, they were trash. I was really just giving my energy and my attention to the wrong people. And I'm going to talk about that in a separate video, just giving your energy to toxic people and just the wrong people and how to get that energy back and stuff like that because, baby... That is some that is some real shit, but bump that. That's not the story that we're talking about today, but basically I was just giving my energy to a lot of the wrong people and I was talking to a lot of um, boys that didn't really like me for real and didn't really care about me and just basically wasting my time. If we're being real, I was wasting my time. Well, I was in debate class. So I was in debate and I was in AP. Well, it was like advanced debate. I got a cord for it and everything. Y'all period, don't play with me. Don't argue with me, argue with your mama because I will win. In 11th grade, I was in debate class and there was this new boy. Um, and it was a lot of new people in that class to begin with because the class was not just a, my 11th grade. It was mixed with 11th and 12th grade and also a couple people from 9th grade that was you know smart, giving smart. So it was a mixture people that I didn't know and people that I did know and of course there were new students that transferred to uh, that school from another school because it was a new year so every year you know there's new kids that come to the school and shit like that so there was this boy and we were doing that whole like stand up and talk about yourself tell the class about yourself your hobbies with your name and y'all if y'all like me I hate doing that like I'm not even a shy person but when it comes to like being on the spot on the spot I do not like that shit and it's crazy because in debate you have to just be on a podium with another person just the two of y'all in front of the whole class and if you're on the debate team you're in front of an audience baby so that shit ain't sweet but um I don't know something about like the whole warm up thing the whole breaking the ice thing when you first go to school or like when you have your first day of school and shit that shit gives me like anxiety like I do not like that shit I don't want to tell y'all my name what I like to do what school I went to before what grade I'm in none of that like that's not y'all business why are we doing this we're all introducing ourselves to everybody and there's this boy in that class and I'm gonna give him a name I'm not gonna be messy this time because y'all know my last names roly-poly and shrimp because they deserve those names but I'm not gonna be messy in this story time I'm gonna try not to be at least I'm just gonna name him red velvet because he likes to bake um, they make, they bake and stuff in his family. He makes a good red velvet cake, so we're gonna call him red velvet. He was new to the school. I didn't recognize him at all. 
and to be honest our first encounter was not a good one our teacher at the time we had um we had a different debate class teacher in 11th grade than we did in our senior year because the lady that was our debate class teacher for all of our years of high school at that school was this really old lady i loved her to death her name was miss kelly she was so sweet y'all that was the sweetest lady i've ever met in my life if y'all know me or y'all went to my school y'all know miss kelly was the sweetest lady ever at the time that was our teacher and she was like i said she was very sweet but she could be a pushover like some students like to talk to her crazy or like if they didn't get the grade they wanted from her you know they would like try to like be rude to her and like show out for the class because they know that she's not going to buck like she really didn't discipline people for real she really didn't give anybody detention or iss or nothing like that she would really just be like can you please stop talking like stuff like that she was a very like fragile sweet old lady and people like to take advantage of that sometimes and i do not play like that i don't i don't play like that i don't like people to take advantage of other people or you know walk over people and stuff like that like given the chance back then i could walk over people if you know they had a, a very weak personality because i have a very strong personality but it was never intentionally me walking all over people and like you know like bossing people around and no stuff i was never doing that intentionally but people would be intentionally being rude to this lady because they know that she's sweet and that she's not really going to do anything about it she's not going to say something to you about it but i'm going to say something to you about it and that's that nothing left to say like period. one of the days that we were in class it was probably the second day of school School, and she was basically asking everybody what they wanted to be called because some people have nicknames some people don't like to go by their first name they like to go by their middle name or like me my name's Chessa if I wanted her to call me Chess or CC or y'all yeah, no T pause I used to like people to call me CC in middle school because I hated my name so much because people used to say Chester and that used to trigger me because my brother used to call me that and that doesn't even get to me anymore. I love my name. I feel like it's very unique and it's just, I just love my name. But I just wanted to tell y'all that because that's so funny. Where the fuck did I get CC from at a Chester? Like, I really thought I was on Shake It Up. No tea. She was asking the class, like, okay, do you want to be called, if your name's Chelsea, do you like to go by Chels? If your name is Jeffrey, do you like to go by Jeff? Shit like that. Red Velvet had a, sh a name that had a very common short name, like, like, if his name was Thomas, like, you know how everybody calls Thomas Tommy and stuff like that. He had one of those names where you could call him the short version of his name, and that would be some regular shit. So she asked him what's his name and he said, you know, my name's Red Velvet. And she was like, okay, do you want to go by Red? And he was like, no, you can call me Red Velvet. And I was like, oh, and, and everybody in the class was kind of looking at each other like, mm. and I was like, okay, but you didn't have to have an attitude with her because she was just asking you what you like to be called. And that's exactly what I said verbatim, y'all. And I know it's petty. It's not really a big deal. That was 11th grade. Like it's like three years later now. Probably now I probably wouldn't say something, probably wouldn't have said anything. Or if I did, I probably would have been like, oh, she was just trying to be nice. You know, awesome chill shit because I don't, you don't always gotta like, you don't always gotta come at people like that. And maybe he wasn't like, you know, intentionally trying to sound like he had an attitude, but that attitude was thick. His attitude was thicker than gravy. Like, I was like, ooh, mm -mm. you don't got to talk to Miss Kelly like that. Don't talk to Miss Kelly like that. And he had looked at me, y'all. I remember, like, it was yesterday. He had looked at me with the meanest face. He was like, and y'all, before we get, like, into the rest of the story time, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first met him, I thought that he was gay. I, I, I don't, I know that it's not, like, nice to say, like, oh, you can tell somebody's gay. There's no specific look of what gay looks like. Um, but you know, like just based off of how he spoke, he spoke more feminine like. And now, fast forward to 2021, no, I would not just assume that if a man speaks with more feminine tone or with his hand gestures or certain faces that he makes or the way he talks, no, I would not assume that a man is gay now. Um, that was pretty ignorant of me, but it didn't turn out, I didn't turn out to be wrong in the end, so I guess it's like, eh. A man is not straight or gay based off how he looks, dresses, talks, or any of that. It's solely based off of what they identify themselves as and what, who they are attracted to and things like that. I didn't get an attitude with him because I thought he was gay or anything like that. It was just like, I didn't like the way that he was speaking to Miss Kelly. So I was like, uh-uh, like I nipped that in the bud. He made a face at me and that was the end of it. Like I let that little squabble or whatever you want to call it go with him that we had like a couple days before because I again I was not trying to start beef with this man like I did not say that with the intentions to carry beef for the rest of the year my intentions for what I said to him about how he was talking to the teacher was no in no way trying to start beef so after that day it was over with if he would have said something to me the next day or was talking to me I would have been talking to him like normal because it wasn't that deep 
I remember I came into class with like um, a sweatsuit. Y'all know like the Juicy Couture sweatsuits and stuff like that. I did not have a Juicy Couture one. I had like a little Forever 21 um, velour track suit that Forever 21 was selling at the time. It was like green and he had complimented my outfit or whatever and he was like, oh yeah, that your outfit is cute. And I was like, thank you. And again, I thought that he was complimenting my outfit on some like uh, appreciating my outfit type of way in like a fashionable type of way, not in like a flirty type of way. So I was just like, oh, thank you. And it was just that. And after that day, we started talking to each other more and more. And while we were in class talking to each other as the days went by, it was never on no flirty stuff. As far as like from my side, I was never flirting with him because again, I thought that he was gay. So I was just talking to him like I would any other friend. And we started to become closer, like closer and closer in school and in class. And I ended up having him in other classes with me as well. I had him in my science class. And the more we spoke in my debate class, I spoke to him in science class as well. And it basically got to the point where I was like, give me your number. I wanted, like, I wanted to be friends. Like I wanted to be his friend outside of school. So I basically got his number and we started texting each other again as friends. And we started talking every day, you guys. Like I was talking to him every single day. It was like that, but nobody thought that we were talking or that we liked each other. Everybody else also assumed that he was just becoming like best friend. And I thought he was becoming my best friend. Like I loved hanging time with, spending time with him. We would gossip together, y'all, I kid you not. We would just, it would just be fun. Like it was like vibes. Like he acted just like me. He's also an Aries. So it was just like, it was cool. So we were becoming very, very close to the point where like I would say he was my best friend. So, I used to, I started coming over his house and we would go to his basement because his basement was really big and he had a big TV down there. I became close with his sister and it would just be all of us kicking it in the basement. We would be watching movies. We would be watching, we would be doing homework together and stuff like that. Just like hanging out with your friend outside of school, like on some regular shit. I would be hanging out with him outside of school. At the time that um, me and him were becoming close, we were besties, I was talking to boys. Like I was talking, well, I was talking to a boy at the time. During the span of me and Red Velvet becoming friends, I had talked to probably two boys in between that, just that time of us becoming friends. And he knew that. He knew the boys that I was talking to or like, it wasn't no serious talking. Like I wasn't dating these boys it was just like on some flirty stuff like you know back when you, we were young that's what we were doing and he knew about them and i would be telling him about the boys that i'm talking to and about you know who i like and like you know on some gossiping shit like this is like this is why it blows me to this day how the situation turned out because like i knew from jump but then we're gonna get into it i didn't feel the need to ask him what his sexuality was because i didn't have an interest in him in that type of way i thought we were just friends after one of the nights that i went over his house i got home and i got a text from him and it was like so do we talk i was just as confused as you guys i was looking at my phone like I was so confused, you guys. I promise you guys, I was so confused. I thought he was pranking me. I thought that he was trying to play. So I was like, what are you talking about? He was just like, oh, I just wanted to ask because I just wanted to, you know, make sure we were on the same page. And I was like, um, because you guys, even if like, regardless of what I thought his sexuality was, like, anytime I've ever talked to any other boy, we established that we liked each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was heavy flirting or we would be calling each other cute and now that i think about it he would swipe up on my story and stuff and put hard eyes and stuff and i would literally be like thank you babe like thank you babe but it was on some like friend shit like how i said to my female friends i'd be like um when they hype me up i'd be like thanks babe or like my guy friends that are gay i'd be like thanks babe so he was probably getting mixed signals from me meanwhile i'm over here just trying to be his friend so i was like um i'm confused like what do you mean do we talk i thought that we were best friends and he was just like no i thought that we talked and then that's when i said I thought that you were gay. I don't remember exactly what I said. I said I just basically said that I didn't think that he was straight. And he got all bent out of shape, y'all. He got very offended. And he has every right to get offended because I shouldn't have assumed what his sexuality was. But again, I was very confused as to what he was talking about. So I was like, um, yeah, I said that. And he was like, no, what the F? What are you talking about? Like, he got very defensive. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know. And I was like, I didn't know that you liked me. I thought that we were just friends. You know what I'm saying? I didn't look at you really in that type of way. And plus, you know that I'm talking to, you know, other boys or whatever. Like, you've been hearing me talk about boys. I've been talking to you about, like, basically, you guys, like, when I was getting played and stuff, I was telling him about it. I was telling him about the boys that were playing with my emotions and all this stuff. He ended up saying, y'all, he was like, 
well, why waste your time talking to these boys that are not taking you seriously when you can talk to me? And I don't know if it's some kind of revelation happened. I don't know if the sky started falling. I don't know what happened. Something had to have taken over me when he said these words. But I was just like, wow. And just a little background. It's not really any like groundbreaking information. But I literally, every boy that I've ever dealt with before Red Velvet has been a piece of literal dog shit. Boys that did not care about me. Boys that had me like... Wasting my time thinking that they like, you know, wanted to get to know me for real and all of these boys wanted one thing from me that they could not get. So they would ghost me and then like it would just be a continuous cycle of boys trying to get something out of me that I wasn't ready to give and then them ghosting me when they decide that the weight is not worth it or whatever. He was telling me like stop dealing with these boys that you've been dealing with. Stop dealing with, you know, trash boys that don't care about you when I care about you and you can just be with somebody who really cares about you. And like, like I said, I was shook. Like I've never had a boy talk to me in this way. I've never had a boy like say these things to me and mean it for real. And of course he could have been not meaning it and I could have got played by him too. And in a sense I did, but it was just, it seemed very genuine to me and, and it really made me think. So I was telling him, I was like, you know what? Give me some time to think about it because again, I've never looked at you in that type of way. So give me some time to think on it and like try to figure out my own feelings. Like I didn't know how I could have feelings for him after, you know, never looking at him in that type of way. But I was like, you know, maybe now that I know that you're not gay, maybe I could like explore some type of other avenue with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm open to anything. Like I'm not the type of person that judges anybody. If somebody tells me they're not gay, I'm going to just think that they're not gay. Like, unless I see some type of evidence that's proved to me otherwise that you're not gay, I'm going to take your word for it because who am I to tell you what your sexuality is? I knew that the friendship really couldn't be the same after that on top of that because he told me that he thought we were talking already and that he had feelings for me. So I'm like, whoa. I'm over here in a whole nother friendship than you. I'm, I'm on a whole nother page than you, baby. I'm on, I'm on page two and you on page like 50. You on chapter 12, I'm on chapter three. Like, we're not on the same time at all. So he was like, okay, you can have all the time you need to think, like, but just know that you will be wasting your time with these boys if you keep talking to them. Like, I really could give you the world and all this other stuff. So I'm like, oh. I basically need to tie up my loose ends or whatever. I cut off, you know, if you want to call them hoes, you can call them hoes. Really, they weren't hoes. It was just boys that were playing with me. They weren't my hoes, bitch. I was their hoe. What the fuck? I was their hoe. I basically tell Red Velvet, like, okay, like, I am interested in you. Like, I, I took what you said into consideration. Like, I'm down to, like, get to know you in a different way than I've been trying to get to know you we started going out he started taking me on dates and again i've never been with a dude who was taking me on dates and stuff like that like i've never been with a dude that really liked me for real and showed interest in me so that's really the only reason that i really i feel like i really fell for him because he was giving me a whole bunch of stuff that i've never had before that i should have had now i know my worth baby like if you're not bringing something to the table you can take your shit to go because you're not eating at the table if you can't bring shit to the table, you're not eating at the table. So basically, yeah, he was giving me a whole bunch of shit that I was not used to. He was being very nice to me, very romantic, very taking me out on dates, giving very much like boyfriend. It was more like he was just my best friend that I kissed from time to time. Like it really wasn't that much affection now that I look at it. And it really wasn't that much romance now that I look at it, now that I compare it to my current relationship. But compared to what I had before Red Velvet, it was a whole nother ball game. Like it was a lot compared to what I was getting before because I was getting nothing before. My best way to explain it is like, when I'm in a relationship, I need a man who can dominate me in every which way. I need a man that can dominate me, that can put me in my place, that can that can protect me and all these things. And in that relationship, I never really felt like that. I really felt like the protector and I really felt like I put him in his place way more than he put me in my place. And to be honest, the relationship really would have never worked out long term regardless of what his sexuality was because the needs were just not met obviously for him and for me because I really need a strong dominant person when it comes to me being in a relationship. But I was so caught up in just loving his presence and his company because he was like my best friend on top of 
getting attention that I didn't get before. So I wasn't worried about any type of dominance or any actual needs that I needed in a relationship at the time. I was not worried about that. And I'm so glad now that I know myself better and I know what I need in a relationship, what I need from a partner. So I don't even got to worry about, you know, not getting those needs met and shit like that because I put my expectations and my standards and all of that up on the forefront so everybody knows what's going on and there's no misunderstanding. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of backstory um, with certain things that would happen in our relationship before I get to, you know, the main idea here, how I found out that he in fact was gay. Um, I'm going to tell you guys little things that would go on in our relationship that should have been very, very huge signs that he probably was not straight. If, if he wasn't gay, he was bi or something. Um, but basically, first of all, when we were at school, y'all, this is why I said I felt more like a protector. I literally almost fought multiple people for telling, for calling him gay, for writing little smart shit on the bathroom walls. Like, I remember one time somebody wrote on the bathroom wall that I do things with red velvet in his butt and stuff like that. Like, that I, basically, that I give him a strap. That's what they wrote on the wall in my bathroom at school. In the men's bathroom. And somebody took a picture of it and showed me. And I found out who wrote it. It was another gay boy at the school. And I tried to get right with him. Like, I literally tried to fight him at lunch, y'all. Like, I got in arguments with multiple of my guy friends that were telling me that he was gay. I was like, uh-uh, don't say that. Like, no, you're not about to say that about my boyfriend. Like, don't. Like, I was coming with it with everybody that was trying to say that about him. And he really didn't do anything about it. Like, anybody that said that about him, he really didn't say anything back to them. He didn't really confirm nor deny anything. He would just be like, okay, if that's what they want to say about me, that's what they want to say about me. And yeah, period. Like, if that's what you are, then that's what you are. And again, when you're young, y'all, I completely understand that it is hard to come out um, because people in the world are not accepting of gay people. They're not accepting of LGBTQ. And I understand that. So I'm not judging him for having not said something or defending himself or whatever. I understand why he did it. But he would want me to defend him instead of him defending himself. So I was going at it. Like, I was like, y'all, don't say that about him. Like, like what? Do you want to fight? You must want to fight. Because, baby, my hands are by. What is up? Like, I don't, I don't care. Not only was I damn near fighting people in school I was disagreeing with people in school about him I was telling my own friends my own friends were telling me like girl you don't think he's gay like girl he acts a little feminine like are you sure he's not gay like are you sure you're not a cover-up and I would be like yelling yelling like with my chest that this man is not gay like he would not be lying to me this long telling me like this is my best friend I know everything about him he is not gay like there's nothing y'all can put in my head y'all can't plant no type of egg in my head or plant no type of seed in my head for me to start thinking this man is gay because he told me he is not and there were a couple times in our relationship where I would be kicking it with him and I would be like you know like I guess I guess the seed was planted but it was it wasn't planted all the way but sometimes I would be like bro like I'm tired of people talking to me about how like you're gay and stuff I just want you to know that if you're bi or if you're gay in any type of way you can tell me that like if you're using me as a cover-up you can tell me that. I won't tell nobody. I will continue to be your cover up. But just let me know so I'm not wasting my time and my feelings because I'm really like feeling you and stuff. And he would tell me, he would put it on me, y'all. He would put it on my life. He would put it on my life and on my unborn children. He would put it on, er on everything that he's not. So God forbid I can't have babies now, but he was putting it on everything that, you know, he is not, that he that he really has feelings for me. Because he, he pursued me first. So he was like, nah, it's, it is what I said it is. Like, it's exactly what I claim it to be. Like, I'm straight and I have feelings for you and that's it. So I wasn't gonna keep asking him every day, y'all. After he told me that, after he put it on me, and I didn't ask him to put it on me, but once he put it on what he put it on, it was that. And that was it. So I was like, okay. So I stopped asking him at that point. I continued to defend him as any friend or girlfriend should. And like, yeah, it was just that. Fast forward, and we're gonna give this girl, because there's a girl that's a significant part of this conversation. Um, we're gonna give this girl a nickname. Um, she is somebody that has been in my life for a very long time. I'm not gonna say exactly who she is to me because then everybody will be able to figure out who it is. And I don't got time. For drama, okay, I don't got time. We're gonna call this girl roller coaster because my relationship with her is a roller coaster. It's up and down, it's all around, it's looped, it's stopped, and then it goes. It's all of that. So we're gonna call her roller coaster. And roller coaster would tell me, like, from time to time, like, girl, I think he's gay. Like, 
he acts very gay i just you he's gay like she would tell me that and i would tell her like yo like chill i don't want to hear that from you i do not want you telling me that like please i would tell all of my friends y'all including roller coaster please stop telling me this if y'all think he's gay and one day it comes out that he's gay then you're right but at the time I didn't want to hear that shit because I didn't believe that and I, I am the naive clown I guess but I was taking his word for it because that is what he was telling me y'all. You're so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. And I had feelings for this boy after he told me that he wanted to talk. So not to get too personal and too nitty gritty or not too you know uh to to tmi with the situation but i feel like it's necessary to tell you guys little things that happen other than just me trying to fight people for people thinking that he was gay like things things also other than you know him speaking with a more feminine tone or with his hands or with his neck or anything like that um but something that should have been a clear indication that something was off um, I lost my virginity to this boy. Um, I was 17 years old. That's when I lost my virginity. And he supposedly lost his virginity to me too. I'm saying supposedly because we never know, y'all. He do, Boys do not have a hymen that breaks. So we never know if we are really, if they're really losing their virginity to us or not. But I, again, am taking his word for what he told me. He told me that he's never done it. Um, so basically we lost our virginity to each other probably seven or eight months in the relationship when me and Red Velvet would get to doing Sexual intimate things with each other. We would have some technical difficulties some technical difficulties that you would think would happen to someone with some type of condition or that is like 60 years old or something like you know like we will be having some difficulties that you would think your your grandpa or your 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 senior citizen neighbor would be having not somebody 17 years old so if you guys with me saying that you guys should catch my drift you should understand what i'm trying to say that we were having some you know dysfunctions happening and it was to the point where i was asking him like yo like you should go to the doctor like maybe there's something wrong because you know we're we are growing humans that have hormones like maybe you have something going on that you can get situated at the doctor because i don't know what's happening and it was starting to make me feel insecure because i'm like damn like what the hell is happening i've never heard of this shit happening to no 17 year old like either you don't like me or something's wrong down there and it turns out it's not that he don't like me baby i think he just doesn't like my parts and that's all we're gonna say i never really gave him shit about it past that like we continued to do it and it would just be sometimes it would be you know a success sometimes it would be a fail like sometimes it would be tricky stuff like that so it was just like okay whatever so that was a big red flag i feel like but i looked at it as like maybe it's just because we're young and we just started doing it again i knew nothing about sex i was a virgin until we did it he was a virgin until we did it so he was just telling me that it's not anything like what i think it is it's just like he just doesn't know like maybe it's because we're, we just started having sex he's not used to you know what's going on and stuff so i'm like okay if that's what you say again if that's what you say is wrong with you it's your body i'm not gonna tell you what's wrong with your body i'm not gonna make an appointment for you to go to the doctor but if this is gonna keep happening baby we're gonna have to stop what we're doing or you're gonna have to figure out what's going on we started to argue like an old married couple like every little thing that i was doing was aggravating this man everything he was doing to me was aggravating me like he started to be nonchalant more and more nonchalant towards me and like if y'all know me i hate that nonchalant shit i cannot deal with people acting like they don't care about me it will break me he started to act like he didn't care about like my feelings and stuff like that and there was this one day i was over his house i was laying on his bed he was sitting like in a, one of his little chairs that he has in his room and we got to arguing and i was like i finally was just like bro like you're acting like you don't care about me if you don't want to be with me then why don't you just say that and he looked at me and he was like i don't want to be with you oh 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 okay oh wow so i'm like um this is the first time that this man has ever said some shit like that like again we've been arguing and stuff but he wasn't the type to be like i don't want to be with you like i'm breaking up with you like no he he was telling me get out of his house he was like get out can you leave just leave the house just leave the house and i was like are you gonna talk to me like this is new like we were good and yeah we were arguing like i said but we would always make up it was just like i thought that because the longer we were together you know we started to argue more but it was on some regular shit i didn't think that like he was unhappy with me because i was for sure not unhappy with him so i was like uh you want me to leave like he was like yes leave like he wanted me to leave his house and he did not want to talk about it y'all like he had the coldest look on his face no emotions nothing he was like get out of my house so 
what did I do, bitch? I grabbed my tail feezy. No, I'm playing. I didn't have no tail feezy, but I grabbed my stuff and I left his house. I left and I was like, can I call you? Like, can we talk about it? And he was like, maybe. Um, huh? Sir, we've been together for almost a year and you're telling me we can maybe talk about us just randomly breaking up? No. I left his house. I was blowing him up. I was like, bro, what is going on with you? Like, what is wrong with you? And he was just like, he started going off on me. He was like, I'm tired of doing shit for you. Like, I'm tired of us being in a relationship and me feeling dominated, like, dominated by you and blah, blah, blah. He was just going in on me. Like, he was like, I don't like when you do this. 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 And I was like, oh. I was just too much for him. I was too much woman for this boy. So, um, and I'm not gonna say, like, there were things about me in that relationship that I needed to change in order to have a successful relationship after that. So, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I didn't do anything wrong in the relationship, that he was just tripping, that it was just because I was too much woman. No, I was too much woman and it was too much, it was overwhelming for him dealing with me as a woman that he's in a relationship with. But I also did do things wrong in the relationship as well that also caused him to be unhappy. So this shattered my heart. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I have never gone through a heartbreak other than that one time. Like. I was crying my eyes out. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, can we talk about it? Can we just like, we don't need to just break up. Like, can we talk about it? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? And girls, never, never. If a man wants to walk out of your life, open the door for him and let that nigga leave. And I'm not saying if like, you know he's going through something or you know that there's like another thing going on that's causing him to like, wanna break it off. I'm talking about if a man is telling you like, I cannot deal with you. I don't like you. I don't like this, 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 this and out about you. I don't care about you no more i don't want to be with you let that nigga go run you go bitch let him go because you don't need that what is that <laughs> i'm in danger yeah you don't need no man telling you that you're too much for him to handle because there's another man around the corner that'll handle you plus some so um but at the time i was heartbroken again i didn't have no type of self-love self-worth nothing like my life revolved around this relationship which again is never good you never want to be in a relationship with someone and your life be that relationship your relationship should be a minor part of your life your life should not be a minor part of your relationship if that makes sense so yeah i'm over here like basically telling him like can i just come over and we talk about it like we need to make something work like let's make this work and he's like no like y'all he's cold as hell he's like no there is no working it out there's no nothing to be talked about i don't got shit to say to you it's done leave me alone like bitch leave me the fuck alone but after he broke up with me like we were still in school so i was going to school and y'all i had to sit and see him in my debate class i had to partner with him sometimes and he would not talk to me other than for that work he would ignore my text messages after school, during school. I would be walking up to him at school like, can we talk? Like, y'all, it was embarrassing. I would be crying in class like I was that girl. Like, I was crying in class. I was talking to him, trying to get, trying to find him in the hallways, trying to see if we could talk. I was coming and sitting by him at lunch and he was sit getting up and moving to another seat. Like, it, I was out bad, y'all. Like, I was really chasing this man. Like, it's so embarrassing, but he was being the coldest to me ever like he was so fucking cold this is like towards the end of march so like for a whole month i'm just like i'm ready to die at this point like I'm, i was ready to unalive myself damn near like i'm not even joking like that's not something to joke about i'm not joking there is this little saying which i already told you guys in my last story time but if you didn't watch that go watch it the first story time the first video on my youtube channel is about this boy that i'm about to bring up right now the boy that is his name we're gonna call him i don't even know what i called him last time but we're gonna call him dirty that's all we're gonna call him because he's dirty i started talking to this boy named dirty that i had some history with i hit him up and i was telling him how i'm single how um you know i'm really going through a hard time in my relationship and he basically told me i should come fly out to texas and come see him and what i had a little short relationship with him because he was very dirty and he was cheating on me and and it was a mess i probably shouldn't have trusted no type of rebound relationship anyways but um as they say when you have a nail stuck in the wall you can knock it out with another nail so i was trying to get my mind off of red velvet so i put my attention on somebody else which was this boy dirty i did fly out to texas because my family's from there and i spent spring break there Woo -woo -woo -woo. and i was feeling so much better i wasn't even thinking about red velvet anymore i was like yeah like this this took my attention off of it i like you know this boy named dirty like it's whatever red velvet who like 
I'm not worried about that shit no more. I get back to school from spring break. I started talking to him and he was being cold to me though, y'all still. Like he was being, he was answering my questions. Like it wasn't like he was ignoring me, but he wasn't trying to be like cool. Like he wasn't on some like, oh yeah, like let's let's link. Like he wasn't trying to be friends. He wasn't trying to do no shit like that. I go home from school that day that we got back from spring break and I'm talking to Roller Coaster. I'm talking to Roller Coaster about the situation and she's like, bro, like I wanna see if this man is gay. Like there's no way that he just broke up with you out of nowhere and you know, doesn't wanna be with you anymore for, for the reasons that he told you because like it could be worked on if it was that. Like it has to be something else. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel like it's your place to, you know, try to figure out if he's gay or not. So I think I'm good off that. Like she basically told me that she wanted to get her cousin who's gay to try to um, spit game at Red Velvet to see if Red Velvet would flirt with him back to see if he's gay. Like basically trap him in a test. I didn't like that idea. I felt like it was very messy. I felt like that wasn't cool because it's like you're kind of forcibly outing somebody and whether he's gay or not, I'm over him at this point. Like I, I don't want, I don't need you to do that. Like I told her, like I had it in the text messages where I told her and her cousin that I did not want them to do that. And y'all, they still decided to do that behind my back. We had a whole beef about the shit. Um, they basically were telling me that, you know, I shouldn't have been mad about it. And they were like, they were basically like coming for me because I was coming for them. They were like, you're going to get mad at him um, when he's the one who broke up with you. Why do you care so much? And it was because it wasn't even that I cared about him because yes, he did do me dirty. Like he kind of like was very cold to me while I was going through my heartbreak and stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm not for outing somebody at all. I'm not, I'm not for doing shit like that. Like I didn't care to know if he was gay or not. I didn't care about any of that because I had at this point accepted that he did not want to be with me anymore. So it's not your place to go out of your way to see if my ex-boyfriend is gay or not. That's messy. So, not to mention her cousin was older than Red Velvet. Not like 20 something years old, but he was probably like 19 or 20 years old and Red Velvet was 18 at the time. And I was just like, eh, like just, just don't do that. I don't like that idea. So basically, Roller Coaster decides to do it behind my back and she sends me the screenshots of the results of this test that she decided to do. And it's very funny now because like now I test cheaters and stuff like that and it was kind of like, it gave me those those vibes. Like it gave me catching a cheater vibes. But anyways, um, yeah, she basically had him text him and flirt with him to see what he was saying. And he unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because it wasn't genuine. So I didn't think that that was cool. But Red Velvet unfortunately flirted back with her cousin and he screenshotted it, sent it to uh, Roller Coaster. Roller Coaster sent it to me. And I was pissed, y'all. I went the fuck in on Roller Coaster. I was telling them that that was lame as fuck and that I did not appreciate them doing that shit at all. So basically, I went ahead and I came to class the next day and I told Red Velvet what went on. I showed, I told him, I said, I don't want you to have no type of reaction. Like, I don't want you to feel embarrassed by what I'm about to tell you. I don't want you to feel like I'm judging you with what I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you something that I feel like you need to know. And y'all, his face went red. He looked so like nervous for me to tell him what I was about to tell him. And he was just like, what? And I was like, the boy that you texted, I showed him the messages and like he grabbed the phone and he was like acting like he didn't know what he was looking at. He was like, like, what is this? And I was like, Red Velvet, I know what this is and I'm just letting you know that you need to block him. You don't need to text him anymore because he was texting you to trap you. That's Roller Coaster's cousin. Um, he, This was something that I told them that I didn't want them to do and I just wanted to let you know so that you don't continuously talk to this boy because he kept texting him, y'all. The Roller Coaster's cousin kept texting him like, after the test was over and I was letting him know that he does not need to text back because that shit was not cool. And he was like, thank you, like, wow. Like, he looked like he was so relieved that I told him that instead of like, he, he basically told me, he was like, wow, I really respect you for that because you could have did something really bad with that information. Like you could have, you know, exposed me at school or you could have been bitter and you're coming here to tell me that in a nice way and I really appreciate you for that. And I was like, yeah, of course, because I am not hateful. Like I'm not gonna judge you. Um, of course, I wish you would have told me during our relationship um, that you liked boys and that, you know, that you were gay, but like at this point in my life, I don't care. And at this point I'm over you. I don't have no hard feelings. Like I just wanted you to know this because 
that shit ain't cool and basically y'all after that we became friends we went to prom together as friends i wasn't mad i wasn't bitter about the situation um and it was still unclear to me because even after we were friends he basically was telling me that you know that the feelings he had for me were genuine and that he really did like me and stuff but i don't know and i it's not that i'm saying that i don't believe that he could be bi but he's now out as gay He's out as gay, not bisexual. He has a boyfriend now. He's living his best life. And I wish him and his boyfriend the best. Like, I have my boyfriend. Like, everything's cool. I literally got his permission to talk about this situation. I just thought it was crazy. Like, I just wanted to tell you guys this story because it's a good and juicy story. I continued to date that boy Dirty until I found out the dirty shit that he was doing. Um, and yeah, everything was cool after that. And that's really the end of this story. I still do not talk about it with him, what his, actual, what his sexuality was back then, or if he thought he was straight and I turned him gay or what may have you. But um, he ended up telling me that before we got together, he did in fact have a boyfriend before living with me that he was hiding. Um, so it was always known to him that he liked boys, but I guess he wanted to experiment with me. I'm not 100% sure, and um, I really don't know how I feel about it as far as like him experimenting with me if that is what he did. But at this point in my life, I'm content with everything that I have gone through in my life. I don't regret anything. Um, I'm not bitter about anything. I let everything go because I am on my way up. Like, what? There's nothing negative to dwell on. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't care about any of that shit anymore. It's in the past. I was a youngin. Um, you go through shit for a reason. It's either a blessing or a lesson. So it must have been a lesson and a blessing at the same time because he ended up coming out and you know living in his truth and i ended up finding the boy that i'm with now so everything is cool calm collected and there's no beef now tell me in the comments how you guys feel about the situation what you guys would have done again do not comment anything homophobic in the comments because i will not tolerate that like this ain't that do not say anything bad about homosexuality or nothing because i am not fucking with that um but just let me know how you guys would have went about the situation, what you guys would have reacted like, or what you guys think might have went on. Just your comments or your opinions in the comments. Um, and yeah, comment down below other videos that you guys would like to see from me. You guys are seeming to really like my sit down videos with y'all, my girl talk videos, my story time videos. And you guys tell me on Instagram and stuff that y'all like my vlogs, but when I post my vlogs, y'all don't really show my vlogs too much love, but you know, I'm gonna keep doing them. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different content for you guys. So make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you won't miss a post. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.